Hello, and welcome to Larry's Corner. As you can see, I'm actually seated in the corner. This is the first of our videos that we're going to produce. Since the coronavirus is keeping us all kind of locked down for quite a while, we're all, I think, missing the companionship and the discussion and the things that we got from the camera club when we could have meetings. So in an effort to sort of answer some of the questions, because I know that I went a lot of times would go to the camera club with questions that I wanted answers to. Uh, and I think a lot of other people do too. We're gonna to kind of start a technical corner, so to speak, where we can address just about any question you have on photography, or we're going to try to. Uh, this started off as a vlog, and now we're gonna kind of expand it and put it on its own little website hooked up to the camera club. So let's get started. The first uh, question that I got was from uh, Charles Hatton, who asked about the Godox flash system. Godox is a new flash system on the market. They've been out for, well, actually they've been out for quite a while, but they've recently gained an awful lot of popularity as an alternative to some of the bigger manufacturers like Nikon and Canon. Specifically, they started coming, they started getting real popular when Sony really sort of uh, came out, people started using them a lot more than they had been before. And also over the coming, over the years, they've gained quite a reputation for reliability and for quality. So I'd like to talk about the Godox system. They make three flashes, they actually make qu quite a few flashes, but I own three of their products. I own an 860 Mark II, a V1, and an AD200. All of them are aimed basically at the kind of DSLR photography that I do. So I'm going to talk about all three of them, but I'm going to present them as three different programs. The first one that we're going to talk about is the smallest one, the Godox 860 Mark II. This uh, sort of uh, came on, on the scene, rather burst right on the scene, very practical flash. Everybody started buying them uh, because, for one thing, they are an awful lot like, in the Canon world, the Canon 600 RT. This flash has been the mainstay of the Canon wireless program. It came out about three, four years ago, and this is the original one, the 600 RT. I think now they have a 600 RT too. But this camera, or this flash, uh, came out as the Canon's first real wireless flash. Up until that time, different governments had different laws about uh, using wireless and using uh, radio technology in their countries. And as a result, Canon and Nikon, neither one had a good wireless system. You could buy third party items that worked sometimes and sometimes they didn't. And but the most dependable was of course the one built by the manufacturer. Canon and Nikon both relied on this little red thing here, which is an optical slave. In other words, it receives an optical pulse from the camera and it tells the flash what to do. The drawback to that is you pretty much have to be in direct line of sight with it. It doesn't work well when it's off to the sides. Uh, they had a number of problems. They were usable, but not really what I would call a very reliable instrument. Now, the, uh, with th that being said, this when this came out, it totally revolutionized the way that I did photography. Because now all of a sudden, I could get this camera off the flash, and I could get it off a long way. You've always been able to get the camera off the flash with a cord. This is the cord. This is a Canon original manufacturer cord that hooks into the flash here and hooks onto the top of your camera on the hot shoe. Good example. Hooks on the hot shoe and now you've got a, a off-camera flash. Problem is, you've only got about this much space. You could hold it up, you could hold it down to the side, you could use it to shape light in that way, but you kind of had to be conscious of what it was going to do and where it was going to be. This combination you could also use a PC cord, which is a little device that hooks into the side of the camera, very small, and it goes a little further, usually to, to use the flash on a tripod. I've always thought the PC cords were made for one reason, so that photographers would trip over them, pulling down the flashes and the equipment have to buy new. Uh, I've never been real fond of that system, but it's all there was. Then, lo and behold, we got wireless. Wireless is really just a radio uh, signal that goes between the camera and the flash. 
wireless technology. Some of the newer cameras actually have the wireless system built right into the camera. This is coming out new. I don't know exactly which models have it, but there's some that now will control their own manufacturer's flash. None of them will control a third party manufacturer's flash. It's all gonna be, if you have a Canon camera, you're gonna need a Canon flash to get that service if it's available. So with that in mind, they, uh, Godox started producing a number of uh, off cameras that use these controllers. This is how wireless technology works. This is the controller for the Canon camera. You put it on top of this, lock it down, turn it on, sync it with the, with the RT600, and then you can be as far as 50 feet away. Some of them I think will go 75 or 100, but it basically will get you at least 50 feet of flash. By the way, 50 feet is probably longer than this flash can do. So it gives you a very effective system of using speed lights. This is really beneficial if you do any kind of architectural photography, people who depend on placing a lot of different speed lights and different powers around the room and taking a picture. This was a real game changer. So this is an, this is an RT system. Does not depend on having a pulse here, even though that's gonna happen, turns on automatically. It will talk to this wirelessly and it will give you a flash. Very reliable, but uh, this works, every, you know, works first time every time. I've never had a failure with it. I've used this, I think it's been about four years that I've been using this type of flash. Never had a failure yet. They work perfectly, always get great exposures, no complaints whatsoever. Now, so why, why consider Godox then? We've already got these, why not go to, why not just stick with the uh, old Canon where I've always had? When I bought Sony, uh, and I own both systems and I use both systems, I started to realize that I needed a different flash. The Sony flashes, to be quite honest with you, wonderful cameras, wonderful equipment, flashes are really bad. I've never seen a Sony flash that I really like for a lot of reasons. So when Godox started advertising that they were gonna make one, it became very exciting to me. The Godox, this is the first one that I ever owned, the 862, 860 Mark II. Now this is a lithium ion powered flash. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But this one came out. It also has its own controller, a controller made by Godox. And it fits just like the other one did on top of the camera. This pairs with this and it gives you the exact same performance. 50, 65 feet away roughly. Now I know they'll probably, you'll probably read different things in the manuals. I found that 50 to 60 feet is, is, is they get a little iffy after that in some cases, depending on what else is around them or what's between them. Otherwise, uh, you, you, some of them will go 100 feet. But generally speaking, 50 feet no matter what. This controller and this flash versus this controller, I mean this flash and this controller. Why? What's the difference? Why would I do one over the other? Well, the next consideration in buying any photographic equipment is how much did it cost? That's a big consideration, I think, for everybody. It certainly is for me. So when I started looking at these, I began to realize what a savings I could make. This flash, 600RT, $440. This flash, Godox 860 Mark II, $179. Significant amount of savings. The uh, controller for this is a $235 Canon controller versus a $59 Godox controller. So automatically, and if you need to use more than one of these, the money starts to mount up at $179 versus $449. It's a big savings. Now the other thing about this camera that I like, the other thing about this I like a lot, has to do with the power management, the batteries. In these cameras, in the Canon system, you use four AAA batteries inside the flash, and that if you're going to only use the flash, that you're gonna to have to depend on those four triple, uh, double A's. They will last probably about two to 300 shots, maybe, if you're uh, lucky. If you want more power than that, Canon also makes a little power pack that goes with it. Problem is, this power pack is also dependent on batteries. This one holds six AA batteries, 
and it goes into the side of the flash right here. Oops, wrong company. Goes into the side of the flash right here. There are some third-party power packs made. You have to be careful in using them as they can damage your flash. Canon does not make anything more than this little thing that I'm showing you here. So now all of a sudden you've got four in there and six. You've got ten batteries powering your flash. They have all the same problems that all of these small cells do. One, as you use them a lot, and especially if you use them repeatedly and they don't have time to build up the charge, they get weaker and weaker as you go on. As a result, you'll lose battery power. That was, has always been a significant drawback. I use normally a, uh, a cheetah stand power pack when I'm using this. However, it can overheat the flash and it can damage the flash if you don't use it very, very judiciously. You have to be aware of what you're doing. It also plugs into the same spot. One thing to say about that uh, power pack and its use, that pow the power packs, that uh, the big power packs that run these things are all lithium ions and they can really, you know, heat one of these up bad. So you've always got to be aware of what the temperature is. Anyway, and not many people use them. Mostly you're going to be dependent on that system. Well, so all of a sudden Godox comes out with this and they changed the, the, the real game changer in it was the battery that's in it right here. This uses a, uh, a lithium ion battery, about big square thing that fits into that hole, one battery, 2000 mAh of power. This will give you between 650, 700 flashes, pretty much as fast as you can push the trigger. Recycle time, half second, sometimes a full second, depending on how much power you've called on it to use. You can adjust the power on these. So if you're firing at full power, plan on a second between recharges. Less than that, so fast you won't notice it. Also, it's just one battery. It fits right in there, pop it right out. Now, this uh, battery costs, you get one with the flash, of course, but I, and I always buy at least one or two extra batteries for everything I have. I've got uh, two of them. They cost $40 a piece for the batteries. When I, in my wedding shooting days, I would take 48 batteries to every wedding for two cameras. And usually I would be right at the end of it. When the batteries started to get weak, I just take them out and throw them away. I didn't try to save them because I didn't want to miss a critical shot because my flash couldn't recycle fast enough to catch what was happening. Well, with this battery, you don't have to worry about that because it, I've never found that it's outrun anything that I've done. And it is very reliable, plus the fact it's a lot less. $40 for one battery that's going to last you at least three years, sometimes longer, depending on how you use it and what, at least, uh, at least three years, as opposed to throwing away 24 uh, AA batteries every time I, I went to an assignment. Believe it or not, inside of one wedding, I would have gone through the batteries that would pay for all three of my batteries here. So the battery power was a big, big difference. Lighter to carry, easier to manage, pop it in, you're good to go. Uh, this camera also, these two flashes are largely identical in just about every other way. Same distance on the head. They both have this little cute little thing here that I have used sometimes, I don't use it a lot. They have a built-in diffuser, little diffuser that comes out and pops down, covers your flash, and a bounce card. If you use bounce cards, comes up, hits that, goes out. Uh, they both are, they both have it. They're both built in, perfectly good. Uh, I don't use them very much, but another advantage to having a square-headed uh, flash is a lot of accessories. All of these companies make various accessories for these flashes. But a lot of accessories are not made for just that, uh, for a particular brand. A lot of accessories are generalized. Here's one that is probably used, and every photographer makes fun of these. This is a Gary Fong light sphere. And even though everybody laughs at them, everybody's got them in their, in their gear bag because they are so very usable. Uh, they're called Fong Dongs or uh, Gary Fong Tupperware. Uh, but they have a lot of uses. This one, will fit just about any square-headed flash on the market. You just simply slip it over the top, pop it down, 
and there you've got your Fong Dong set on your flash. It's a nice diffuser, makes a nice circular ball of light, and it's available for anything. I think these are, I don't think, I don't remember how much these are. I think about $20, $20, $30. Then I bought them a long time ago. They may be more now. But this thing is just one of the many accessories you can buy. Very usable from that standpoint. Now, oh, another one that I've used, and I just, I know this is not about accessories for that, but I'll show it off because this is a very usable thing that in my line of work really works out well. It's a Graslon diffuser. And I put this thing on my camera and I've got sort of a mini soft box. It's got a lot of mirrors and reflective surfaces in there. It also comes with two different fronts. This one's the flat front, more for things straight in front of you. It has a curved one for rooms. Uh, very nice uh, diffuser. Those two diffusers are the ones that go with me everywhere when I'm shooting and I use them a lot. There's also a bunch more. You can buy grids, barn doors, snoots, all these, and it'll all fit these. Some are made by the people who make the flash and a lot of them are made by third parties. So, so much for all of these. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about is the availability of these. This flash, the, Go the Godox, I bought, uh, I buy all of my photographic equipment and have literally since the day I started from one of three places. I either buy it from Amazon, Adorama, or B&H Photo Video in New York. I think we've all had experience of uh, some of the early days when you the photo magazines had carloads of gear at unbelievable prices, only to find out that it was consistently out of stock, or that it was, uh, or they'll sell you uh, the manual and all the other stuff you needed for more money. So, I mean, I have never had a problem dealing with any of these people. I've dealt with uh, all three of them. I would say I was at B and H and Adorama. I've dealt with for over 40 years. Anything I've ever had to return goes right back. I've never had a problem with them. They stand behind anything, any contract that they honor. But the Godox flashes are manufactured in China. So once you're out of warranty, or if you're in warranty, you have to send this back to the factory, the factories in China. That sometimes leads to a little bit of difficulty in dealing uh, you know, across the ocean with a manufacturer. That's one reason that the uh, Godoxes that the Godoxes that are sold by Adorama, which really aren't, they're not, um, their brand name is Flashpoint. They are the exact same flash. All the parts are interchangeable, batteries interchangeable, everything, it, it's made by the same company. Just Adorama, I think, probably was the original distributor of them, so they have a contract with them. But they also, from what I've heard, I've never had to send either of these flash, any flash back. They always work. Uh, but I do know people have required service or required replacements. And from what I understand from uh, my peers, Adorama does a magnificent job of replacing anything and fixing things for you, making sure that you're happy with your purchase. Uh, I would recommend that because dealing with overseas companies can sometimes become be very frustrating and usually it doesn't work out in your favor. So anyway, that's the first of these flashes. The 860. R2, R Mark II. Uh, I have several of them. I use them in my light rig. Uh, I would certainly not hesitate to recommend them, uh, as opposed to the Canons, which are also are just as dependable and just as good, but twice, twice or more the price. Uh, that's going to be the end of this first little video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, We'll probably make this a standard feature on our uh, web on our new website, the Camera Club's website, where we can talk to people. If you have questions or you want answers or you want to uh, ask anything I, that I can answer about equipment, by all means, let me know. Charlie, I hope this answered your question about them, and I look forward to seeing you in my corner at the next video. Thank you.